Hi there. If you're here watching this guide, it seems to me that you're interested in finding out which of those GPT-3 based writing tools is the one for you. Now, right up front, I'm just going to tell you that the tool is probably shortly AI. But if you watch on, I'll try to explain why I choose shortly and then go over a few of the other tools as well. So the criteria for the perfect AI writing tool would be something like, um, there are several things, but the, obviously the AI generated text output quality has to be number one. You know, you, what you're getting from the tool has to be quality. The interface has to be usable, kind of just give you what you need and get out of the way kind of thing. The AI writing experience, like the, the techniques and ways that you have to, you know, use the tool to get the AI to do things for you. Uh, the, the flexibility and control that you have over the AI during the writing process. Uh, and the speed, like how quickly and how much more efficient it can make you during your writing. And then, of course, the cost of the tool. So I'm just going to start right away with the best one. That's shortly AI. I, I call it the reigning AI writing champ. And basically, basically because it checks all the boxes and it pairs very, very well with uh, the AI, the, another AI tool called Phrase, which does AI research for you. Uh, the generated output from, from Shortly is excellent and then you have complete control so that you can get precisely what you want from it. And, and even sometimes during the writing process, you can get some, some very useful surprises as well. You can kind of think of it as autocomplete for your thoughts, your sentences, your paragraphs, kind of helping you to work really, really fast. The interface is perfectly minimal. It's just right here, like I'm showing you. You get a title, the writing space, and an article brief. It's really about all the important parts. Uh, of course, write for me when you want the AI to jump in and help. But underneath the surface, there are some commands and some tricks that you can use to get the most out of the tool. And that's when you start when, when you start to master those uh, commands. There, you can see the commands here. But when you start mastering these things, you kind of get the sense that you're know, you're getting writing superpowers. And so you know you just get the most flexibility of any of the tools that are available on the market today. Um, all of this power in one clean sort of blank slate interface. You can write your sales copy, your ads, landing pages, even full length, like long form, like multiple thousands of word blog posts, all on this one screen. In fact, you could write them all on this one document if you wanted to. No jumping around between various tools to accomplish your writing goals. Now, given all this writing power, the cost is actually pretty low. It's just $39 a month and you get unlimited text generation. And you can actually save 40% if you purchase a year in advance. Um, it's just an excellent value compared to the other tools out there that have higher prices and credit limits. Yeah, credit limits, where you're limited to how many times you can use the AI to generate text for you. Shortly, AI does not use credits. You can generate as much text as you want. It doesn't sting like the other tools, you know, when you burn through credits on text that just isn't quite coming back the way you wanted it. And the best part is, is it frees you to experiment without fear of burning through those credits and then wasting them. So for all these reasons alone, Shortly AI is the best available right now, but the founder is incredible too. Always inventing new ways to make Shortly better without changing or disrupting the already amazing writing experience. It seems to me that if you're here, you're interested in improving your writing speed and you want that one tool that can kind of best handle most all your needs. And that would be shortly. You won't regret it. And there's a three-day trial. You can try it for yourself. If you don't, if you find it doesn't work for you, cancel before the trial is over and you won't even be charged. Oh, there's one more thing that really sets shortly apart too from the competition. And it's something you might overlook when you're researching for an AI tool, but Shortly's minimal interface means that it really fits into your workflows seamlessly, kind of augmenting your workflow to help you create fast, particularly useful in competitive markets. You know, you can just jump into Shortly, click on new document and be up and running and writing in no time. There's nothing to jump through to get to the point where you're working. Okay, one more thought for you. Shortly AI helps you write, 
no matter the type of writing. It doesn't force you into a certain type or a certain style. You get what you ask for. Other tools will kind of, other I should say other services will use tools or forms that will force you through a specific task to get to the point where it generates text. And that kind of slows, slows you down a little bit. So that's shortly. This is shortly. And, uh, you know, for this type of interface and the power that's underneath of all this, it's an excellent deal. And I think you should definitely try it out. So the runner up is Headline. Let me just switch over here to Headline real quick. So it's a bit, I call it the hybrid runner up really, because it's kind of a mix of both methods. It has a lot of the form based tools. Like you already noticed right away that there's a lot more choice. There's a lot more things to look at and click on and do. So if you're you're wanting something that kind of guides you through a process of creating some kind of a, a bit of text about something specific, you can click on here and um, you can go to he, just pick the title. Like, do you want a Facebook primary post or a headline? Do you want uh, an article headline? These types of things are are capable are are available to you as individual uh, tools. They call them. So. Uh, let's just say that I want a value proposition. You click on this, you get a little form, you know, you pick some things, you fill out some things. You just basically have a lot of hoops to jump through. Not bad hoops. I'm just saying that there's a, a big difference between creating something with shortly and something with like uh, headline. This portion of headline is very similar to the rest of the tools in this uh, video that I'll describe. And where you basically you pick a bunch of things, you type in the description of your product in this case, because you're trying to get a value proposition and then you hit generate copy it costs you one, one credit to use. You get back a few choices and you can pick and choose your favorites and keep them. It's not bad. And actually headline does a really good job with this part. Um, see if we can go back a case here, um, back again. And the blog post thing, okay, the blog post tool, somewhat similar, except that uh, instead of giving you just a nice blank canvas to write with right away, you go through a series of forms to get to a certain point. Basically, it's trying to kind of set you up instead of giving you a blank canvas. It's not bad. Um, you know, the, the biggest turnoff is is really not the interface or the capabilities of of headline it's it's good it's a good solid product it's just it's fifty nine dollars a month for something that has credit limits and so out of all the tools shortly is the only one really besides niches that has um, a real good unlimited uh, plan kind of so to speak so the main issue with having a credit limit isn't, okay, let me step back for a second. I know why they have credit limits, right? They want to make sure that you're not, you know, or the use, some users don't kind of just go crazy and spam their system and, you know, end up charging up their bill to open AI because all of these tools are using GPT-3 in the background. So they're making, you know, paid costs, you know, connections to that API. So, Every time that you click on that button to get some information or some content from the AI, these programs have to pay for it. And so, you know, I understand the credit limit. It's a way to kind of arbitrarily set up a limit that you can't burn through without ended up charging more to cover their costs. Um, the thing is, is that each API call is actually really, really small in price. And the it's not for me to say it's just that it sure feels like it's it, it, it puts a real squeeze on creativity let's say when you're in the middle of trying to write and you don't want to hit that write for me button because it it's, you know it's going to burn through some credits but you just want to you want to experiment maybe and just see what the ai comes up with and you just you don't want to because you don't want to click that button and burn a credit you know so it's that's really the biggest problem with, with headline. If headline was unlimited generations, it'd be a real good fight between headline and, uh, and shortly, honestly. 
Uh, the UI and everything in Shortly is still my preferred method. You might prefer this method in the case if this ever became uh, unlimited generations for the price they charge, you would, uh, it'd be a good fight. You'd just pick based on which one, ever, which one you preferred. Okay, the rest of the AI writing tools, and I just say rest because the rest of them are forms based purely almost uh, to the point where they're all, you don't get anything like this on uh, any of them. You get only these uh, forms based type things. So, um, so before I discuss the rest of these tools all together in one group, I guess, I don't want you to think that they're poor quality tools. They're not. They're excellent tools, too. They just don't meet all the criteria that I laid forth at the beginning of this video. Um, they, they do pretty good output, things like that, but the EUIs are forms-based, kind of clunky, takes some time to get through, whereas shortly is just something you you get there, you click new, you're in the document immediately. You're writing and going, you know, from the moment you get there almost. These ones, you know, these services are collections of tools, basically. And, and when they say tools, I'm kind of throwing air quotes here because really all they're doing in the background is kind of they're building something that is kind of during the API call, they're trying to template the call in a specific way to get back a certain type of result which is something that you can just do in the interface in shortly yourself for the most part. Um, there are some edge cases where these other tools through their forms might produce a better result in um, some specific instances. But for the most part, you can mimic what they do in the shortly uh, article brief and stuff like that. So when they say tools, what they mean is just, you know, they don't, like if you, if you look right here, 500 characters is what you get for a product description, which is kind of a lot, actually. I don't think all the tools give you that many. Um, but so there, it's in this case of headline, it's most likely, like, I don't know the development of this tool, but um, the API call that goes over to uh, OpenAI, when, they, when, when headline or these other tools ask the AI for information, they're gonna take this, they're gonna take audience, product name, tone of voice, all this kind of stuff, and they're gonna like package it up into uh, roughly a 1500, it's not 1500 word, it's 1500 tokens or so I think, uh, but you know, some words might be two tokens kind of thing. So it's, it's probably roughly around 1300 to 1500 words or something like that, where they get to send it over to, AI, over to the AI. So GPT-3 is designed in a way to where it's really good at predictive or pattern matching and things like that. So what these tools are probably doing is building like a, a story that's like a, a written in a very specific kind of format so that when it gets sent over to the AI, the AI tries to mimic it and return something back in the same sort of style. And, um, you know, and in some ways that's good. Uh, so they give you 500 characters here or so. That means they got a thousand or so characters in the, in the background part that you don't get to see that goes over to the AI to retrieve what you, um, in this case, a value proposition. So I'm sure that Headline is doing something to inform the AI that this is a value proposition and the type of content, trying to build some sort of a template in the background that kind of tells it to pull back like a sentence or two about a product that's being described here. Pretty cool concept. Um, and, and that's the way that the AI was designed. So it's not like they're trying to trick you or anything. It's just uh, instead of giving you all the power to do everything in one nice clean UI like Shortly does, you go through a form to try and help you produce the content. And, and whichever you prefer is, is the tool that you would choose. Um, so services like copy.ai, write sonic, conversion AI, copysmith, and niches are all kind of these forms based things trying to give you specific types of output like Google ads or YouTube video descriptions and value propositions and stuff like this. And, um, you know, some of these tools, when you open them up, they have lots of tools in them, right? Where you get to pick from different options. Just know that in the background, it's, it's all the same thing. One call to the AI or a few calls to the AI to grab the content for you. They're just asking you different or in the background, they're, they're just composing the, the request to the AI a little bit differently. Not good, not bad kind of thing. It's just what it is. And, um, if that's your preferred method, then that's then that's what you choose, right? 
Um, the biggest difference usually comes down for these tools between these tools because most of the content output is roughly the same. The biggest difference is going to come down to the user interface quality and the price and maybe some the talent of the developer for how well they can sort of build that message that goes over to the AI call to get back what they want. Um, the cost value champ right now would be niches because they have a $59 lifetime deal on AppSumo that will give you unlimited generations as well, which is pretty crazy. And so if you can get over to AppSumo and get that, I mean, why not have it in your arsenal for the sometimes generation that it might give you? Uh, and in the future, it might improve to give you something more. Um, but of course, the, the trade-off is that it has also the lowest quality uh, user interface. So this is their interface. Uh, you know, it's it's not terrible. It gives you what you need kind of thing. It's just that, you know, the there's a lot of hoops to jump through when you want to get the content you want. You know, if you want a blog post type of thing, you click on here, you choose that you want uh, an intro, then you're going to get more forms, right? And you just got to start filling all this stuff out, um, you know, before you can hit generate and get back hopefully what you want and in the case of niches it even after even after you click generate it takes another step or two to get to the content that you want it's just how it is done in here um, and that's why it's in the group with the rest of the AI writing tools they don't really they, they only really separate themselves with the quality of experience a little bit um, not necessarily the output so much uh, and so that's that. Um, so the in summary, the one tool that you want, if you want everything kind of in one nice blank canvas where you have all the power to do what you need with the, with the AI and you get unlimited generations so you can kind of spread your wings and write and experiment and just, tr you know, just try the AI whenever you want. That's shortly AI. You want that. Headlines a great option if you need a little bit more of the guided requests to get what you want from the AI. And then you don't mind the credit limits. Like maybe you just don't need to create that much content every month and the credit limits aren't, you know, too restrictive for you. Now, the rest of the tools are, are good too. They, you know, sometimes they have some, some good training in certain parts of their tools that could give you what you need in some instances. Um, but the interfaces and limitations mean that, you, you know, you probably could use Shortly or Headline instead. But... You know, any of these choose, tools that you choose, you will eventually get what you need in some form or manner. And so it all just comes down to sort of, I guess, in the ultimate end, it's what, what comes out of the AI and how easily you can get it from the AI and uh, which interface you prefer. So for me and hopefully for you in the with all the information I've given you in this video, that uh, shortly would be that tool given that you get a nice blank interface. And another little bonus here, I guess I didn't think of, was if you are a Grammarly user, uh, Grammarly Premium, uh, you can just use Grammarly right here, no problem. It doesn't have any weird little issues. You know how sometimes Grammarly can have some hiccups if there's different kind of sections or blocks or fields and stuff like that. And in this case, when you're doing your writing, you don't have to worry about that. You get to use the full power of Grammarly right there in the middle of all your writing to help speed up your writing even more. So that's the video. Shortly AI is the winner in my opinion. If you disagree or agree in the comments, let me know. I, I really appreciate uh, what you hear, just hear your thoughts. And if you have any questions about any of these tools, let me know. I'd be glad to help you out or maybe you'll bring something up I haven't thought of and uh, we can learn from each other. And uh, if, uh, if you don't have Shortly yet and you're thinking about it, please uh, click on the link in the, in the notes below to get to um, before you purchase so that uh, you can support the AI Content Dojo and I can create more cool videos like this and more helpful content to guide your usage of these tools and help you make efficient workflows. Until next time, take care.